Hi everyone, I'll be going over Sandboxy Plus. If you ever wanted to try different apps or files but was not sure how it would affect your computer, then you can use the open source program Sandboxy Plus. What it does is it creates an isolated area or sandbox in your computer so everything stays inside that area, keeping your host computer and configuration safe. Of course, this doesn't necessarily mean you should be running things you normally wouldn't, such as viruses. You should still be smart and use safe computing practices. To download it, go to sandboxy-plus.com, and then you can go to the downloads, and then you scroll down, look for Sandboxy Plus, and then whichever version of Windows that you're running, if it's 32-bit or 64-bit. So I've already downloaded the 64-bit version. I'm going to install it. And after selecting all the defaults, just hit install okay, and I'll start it up. And I'm using this personally and I'll just hit next. I'm going to keep the default as advanced UI. I'm going to keep the defaults here, regular check for updates and finish. So it's now running and we have the default sandbox here that's running and you can right click on it and you can start running applications. So you can run, run a program, run from start menu, execute auto run entries and standard applications. So for example, default web browser, I'll open up your default web browser in the sandbox. So I have here Firefox that's being run in the sandbox and you can tell that it's running in the sandbox because there's a yellow border around my window here. So anything that is ran, anything that is done, it's all inside the sandbox here. And going down here, we see Sandboxy Plus notifications. It's just giving us some notices about Firefox should not be updated while running and to update the program, run it outside of the supervision of Sandboxy. So I'm just going to dismiss them. So going back to my browser here in my Sandbox, if I want to install a browser extension that I wasn't too sure of, I can install it in here and it won't affect my Firefox on my host computer. So if I were to open up a new tab and say I want to install uBlock Origin, Currently, I do not have it installed here. So if I get the extension, I add it. Okay, now it's installed here and it's only installed for this Firefox here in my sandbox. And if I go to my regular Firefox, if I close it, open it up again, all right? And we can see here that uBlock Origin is not here. So if you ever wanted to try something out in your web browser and saw an extension or try something different, then just do it in the sandbox and it won't affect your regular configuration for your browser on your computer. So if there's a program that you want to run inside the sandbox, you can right click on default box, you can hit run and then you can run program and you can put in the path. So I have this batch file here called delete temp show more options and I hit edit. So this will delete everything inside the C colon slash temp directory. And I have this file here called Rufus. So if I were to run it on my host computer and I check my temp directory again, you'll see that everything has been deleted. Now I'm going to copy Rufus and put it back into the temp directory. Now, if I ran the delete temp batch file inside the sandbox, would it delete the C colon slash temp directory? So I'll run it as UAC administrator. And if I check my temp directory, the file is still there. So when I ran the delete temp batch file inside the sandbox, it would only refer to the C colon slash temp inside the sandbox. So everything would be isolated within the sandbox here. Another thing you can do with the sandbox is that if you have an application where you can only run one instance of, for example, Steam, you can open up Steam inside a sandbox as well. So open up Steam. This is on my host computer. And also as well as I can run it inside the sandbox. Run it from the start menu. And here I have an instance of Steam running in my sandbox as well. And if I go to the taskbar, you'll see that there's a hash mark here 
for this Steam instance here. So that just means that it's within the sandbox, which is just another indicator to me that it's inside the sandbox, just like this yellow border here around my Steam window. Now, if you want to see where it stores all of its files, you can go and select your sandbox and go to box content. You can browse files. And it'll show all the files here. And if you want to see where it's storing it on your host computer, you can go to box content and you can go to explore content and it'll show the box directory. And of course, there's a file here that says don't use as this directory structure here is used by the sandbox. Now, if I was to download any files, they would stay within the sandbox as well. So if I was to download the Chrome browser, so it has been downloaded. And if I open up the downloads directory, so as you can see here, the explorers have been opened up in my sandbox with the yellow border here. So Chrome is in here. Now, if I go to my regular downloads directory, you'll see that Chrome is not here. So anything that's downloaded and ran will stay within the sandbox. So I have one sandbox here. I can also create multiple sandboxes by going to sandbox and then creating a new box, call it new box one, and I'll create it as a standard sandbox. There are other ones that are available with data protection and security hardened that you can do as well. But for now, I'll just create a standard sandbox and hit next. And you can see that everything will be saved under this directory. Hit finish. Okay. And then this new sandbox has been created. And I can run Firefox in it as well. And if I want to remove the sandbox, I can go down and just remove it. So that's a quick overview of how you can use Sandboxy Plus. Common uses are using your web browser as a layer of protection. Something happens, using it for development running files you don't necessarily want to run on your host computer, and running multiple instances of programs such as Steam. I hope this video was useful and I thank you for watching. Bye now.